Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the Untitled World. Today we're going to be talking about Fate, the Wings Saga up there. You see that amazing thing over there? Now, to be honest with you, when I saw that this was actually a TV series, something that was a cartoon brought to life, the first thing that came into my mind was, it's going to be lame. It is going to be so lame that I never, ever, in a billion years, a billion years, I'm never going to touch this stuff, man. But then I found myself watching it. And then I watched it, and I watched it, and my God, I watched seasons of this amazing and really beautiful TV series. Um... Now, every TV series has its own hiccups. You can't expect anything to be perfect. There's a little bit of imperfection, but maybe that's the beauty in it. Now, if you don't know Faint the Wing Saga, you should know that there is an entire ass animated series, cartoons. They were showing those things when I was probably in high school. And it was all about these girls who were fairies and they had powers and they had to go against all sorts of evils. And in order to solve these evils, they would need to transform into their fairy form, which basically took about 90% of the whole show because, you know, they have to look good when they're taking down bad people. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And it was... I don't know, back then, when I was watching those cartoons, I watched them because they were cartoons and nothing more. I was addicted to cartoons, so whatever was 2D, I was a sucker for it, okay? It, it sucked, but I had, it was either that or it was local and very annoying drama from my place, which my home had. It's just ridiculous, and I didn't want to watch that. So I was willing to watch anything, anything. And that's why I watched it. I didn't even watch, I mean, the, the TV station that usually showed it didn't exactly show it in a sequence or chronologically. They showed whichever one they could get their hands on. And they would repeat some episodes, and they would repeat more episodes. And I just learned to just appreciate what I got, even if it wasn't cool enough. But yeah, Fate the Wing Saga is actually from a cartoon series, and um, they decided to get serious and get real with it. I would have to give props, or I just have to give them the praise for their animation, I mean, for their special effects, because the special effects were fire, all right? Their eyes glowing was amazing, their their depiction of lightning, fire, fire was, I, I mean, on scale, i probably give the fire a three. But for the lightning, I get the light five. Uh, for the wind, for water, water was awesome. I give water a seven. Um, for tree roots, I mean, they only show this vines, but vines is good. Vines is good. I give vines a six or something. But yeah, so they depict all the laws, I mean, all the nature elements, the natural elements. They show it very perfectly, as well as mind, which kind of seems like um when you're heating something and the air about it looks a little shaky that's how they depict mind control or at least perceiving emotions so yeah i don't really know the actual lore with the cartoon itself but this i'm just going to tell a story from this point of view all right i may have watched the cartoons but i had no idea what i was watching and the animation for the cartoon was pretty bad, so I couldn't bring myself to understanding what I was watching. I just wanted to keep my mind distracted from everything that was going on in my high school life, because apparently high school mattered, and I had problems there, but now I can't even seem to remember them. <laughs> How amazing. Um, so yeah, anyway, it starts off with us being introduced to a character whose name I don't remember, but I can tell you what. I'm not really good at names, so we're just going to call her Red-Haired Girl. Now, the Red-Haired Girl is supposed to be the protagonist, and she's a fire fairy, all right? And um, she's born to parents that had a dead daughter, 
but it was like a switcheroo with magic. So she didn't really die. I mean, she died, but she was quickly replaced with the fire-haired girl, you know. So they saved the day. They allowed the parents to love a daughter, even though they lost their actual daughter, right? That's, I hope you can wrap your mind around that, because we're moving to more darker shit. Um, so yeah, the story uh, starts off with us being introduced to this girl, and she's being introduced into a sort of Hogwarts-like school where we have different fairies with different powers, but they don't use wands because they are natural. Um, they they can perform powers by just wanting to, so it comes easily to them. We get um, we get in league with her friends. We have one friend that blue is her thing i mean like blue is synonymous to water so obviously she's the water fairy uh we've got the green haired girl who's pleasantly plump i've said this before she's pleasantly plump and she controls trees we also have the my control girl who uses purple i mean she's she her eyes glow purple when she's using her um powers and honestly that's the only fairy i liked because she had headphones. I have headphones, technically. Uh, um, but yeah, her powers are pretty much standard. She's able to read the emotions of everyone that is around her. And if they feel it, she feels it. So in order to block people out and stop feeling what they're feeling, she uses the headset. She listens to grunge, which is really amazing. I don't exactly know what grunge is, but I'm assuming I like it because she likes it. I don't have a crush on her. Shut up. Um, but, yeah, mainly we're introduced with to all of the characters, you know, I've shown you all of them. Now we have the bad bitch one who is self-absorbed and is the princess. Obviously, when it comes to TV series like that, I'm not surprised that they show us um, a girl who is rude and very selfish. But, yeah, it happens there because she needs to go through a phase of character development and would end up falling in love, I mean end up appreciating the friendship that she has with the protagonist and so yeah it happens this way we get introduced to the princess of solaria who has duties and is under pressure from her mother who was pretty powerful um so the princess actually has the power of light and you know light is the reason why we get to see everything that is around us if you can control light you can control what people see that is what the queen said and that is pretty amazing now um the way we're starting off we get introduced to the big bads the big bads are the burnt ones now the burnt ones are i don't know they exist as people who are scorched so much, the skincare routine is very terrible, and when they scratch you, you get infected, so it's best not to um, get close to them, or skinship shit is not going to work with them, because you're going to get a uh, sort of crazy kind of sickness. Worse than AIDS, if you ask me. Um, so, the whole story is progressing very nicely. Um, as time goes on, we're introduced that the bird ones are usually solitary creatures, and they don't exactly go out in packs. So, it upsets them when they realize there's more. There's also a little bit of a conspiracy going on. There's a little bit of a bad guy, an actual bad guy, someone who lurks in the shadows. We're not introduced to that person till later in the TV series, um, where it's the ending and everyone shows their nasty faces. But there's a spy girl who's trying to get access into what the headmaster, we're going to call her female Dumbledore, because she's basically acting like Dumbledore. The only thing is that she's not as powerful as Dumbledore, or smart as Dumbledore. So I, I think there's a vast difference, a vast difference between female Dumbledore and Dumbledore. But yes, um, with all that's going on, apparently there's been a history that goes on, um, she used to be in their sort of special forces. There's a whole system that exists. They have specialists and they have fairies. Specialists work with fairies and they go around on their missions. Now, uh, in order to defeat the burnt ones, they have to kill them. You know, like kill something inside them called the cinder, which is supposed to be their heart. It's a very grueling process, but you're not here for that. You're here for how everything goes down. Where it's terrible, okay? Uh, I can't tell you how much this TV series frustrated me because I didn't really understand 
why the girl would do what she did. In a part of this um, season, or in season one, we have her not trusting um, female Dumbledore. And that is because she believes that female Dumbledore is hiding something from her. Which is true, but let's not forget, the person who is female Dumbledore is the one who actually brought her to her parents, took care of her, made sure that she came back to the school so that she can learn to control her powers. But despite all that she had done, all that female Dumbledore had done for her, she didn't trust her. You know, she was trying to find answers on her own, and she did, and she helped bring out a really bad woman who is pretty bad. You know, it's like, she's like evil incarnate, at least that's what I want to believe, but I'm not done with season two yet, so I cannot jump to conclusions. But as far as I'm concerned, this woman actually destroyed the place that fire-haired girl came from. But as we, as it turns out, you know, in order to create a plot twist, she wasn't really from there, okay? She was just, she was just up there in their crib when the showdown happened. Um, so apparently the big bad woman, along with uh, female Dumbledore and some other two guys, they decided that they were going to destroy a place that had burnt once infested it, you know, like, so they threw down a lot of powers and fiery magic and shit like that. <laughs> And it killed everyone there. And people went out to that place where blood witches. And blood witches are bad people. So they didn't really cry for them. And um, somebody killed somebody because... I'm sorry. But I just want to be quick about this. But yeah. There's a lot of shit that goes on in the plot. Okay. Um, we're introduced to characters who whose parents were supposed to be dead. Because they were killed by their tutors. <laughs> But yeah, it, it doesn't really it doesn't really go as planned because technically the person is not really dead and he decided that, hey, you know what? After getting stabbed, I am going to run into the woods and train a little girl as if she were my daughter and um forget that I have an actual son that exists within the school that I was helping to protect in the first place. You know, I'm never even going to visit him, not even once. I'm just going to ignore his existence and pretend that he's dead whilst I go Go on with my new life as the new dead guy in town. That's that's basically one of the dads. That that's his dad goals for that guy. That that's what he believes is his perfect um fulfillment in life. Um I really don't like the way they ended things and how they killed off the hen mistress so fucking easy. Like, dude, we get that the woman was a big bad, you know, the person that uh, female Donald Dole had sealed away. She was supposed to be the big bad. We get it, all right? She had a master plan and she's always planning. We get it. But to let her kill female Dumbledore so easily, it was a little bit of a shock, wasn't it? I mean, like, she raised her in the air and snapped her neck and that's it? The female Dumbledore was the one who took down the, um, a burnt one single-handedly. The rest of the burnt ones, or at least the rest of the time that we saw them fighting, it was because they were paired up, you know, they were paired up, they were able to fight characters, and it was crazy, I, I don't even understand how it was possible, I, it just really bothered me, okay, um, they killed off the headmistress too easily, they were inconsistent about how the cinder works, because it was after they gave the explanation of how the cinder works, before it worked, so, I don't, I don't really know what they want from us now. Um, so season one was a bust. They ended it terribly by killing off female Dumbledore, not even giving her a chance to live. Um, maybe there's going to be a twist because from what I saw, her hair was snapped in midair and blood came out of her mouth. You know, that, that's, that's how you know a person is dead, right? Unless, of course, she's got magic that helps to rearrange her bones and keep her from dying. I don't know. All I'm saying is that season one was just a letdown. And the, the season finale was, in one word, cringe. As this review is, it was cringe. It was, it was, you know the transformation thing that I told you previously that it consisted of 90% of the cartoon series that we were watching? Yeah, well, they decided to pump a little of that energy into the last scene where 
fiery-haired girl goes up against all the burnt ones all by herself because once she unleashes her magic she's unstoppable and in this mode the very big bad tells her that she's got powers inside her all she has to do is let go of that power you know instead of trying to control it let go and be an absolute fiery demon that destroys everything in our pot so she does that she gives into the fire and then she kills everyone and later we realize that the burnt ones are actual people that have been turned so it's kind of like that I don't know, man. There's a lot more complexities going on, and we get to see that there's a much more deeper shit going on in season two. Do I like season one? No. Do I like how they presented powers in it? The special effects was amazing. Storyline was a little bit dumb. It was lovey-dovey, but um, I liked it. I liked it. It, it was episodes that I wanted to watch more of so I would say that was good I, I felt a little bit of wanting to keep up with the story no matter how so it was getting the season finale was a letdown but at least they decided to tie everything together the problem is I think I don't know if they had time but it seemed to me like they were trying to round things up so quickly that they didn't have time to put details or make things look more brave and more uh, dire, you know, so maybe it's my end that is not really capturing the full essence of what they did with the season finale, but they rounded things off, off too quickly, they killed female Dumbledore, and they made fiery-haired girl overpowered more than everyone, which didn't make sense because I was kind of thinking that everyone was a fairy, so what made her so special? Uh, but yeah, I'm sure someone's gonna have an answer in the comments, no matter what I do. But thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, this is this has been fun. I hope to see you in the next one. It's your boy, Young Titan. Thanks so much for watching. I would appreciate the subscription as I'll be doing this on a daily basis. So you're gonna be getting like one review every day. I'm saying that with a little bit of skepticism because I'm trying because I have, I have a really tight schedule there's work there's personal work and there's school so i'm a little bit uh i'm a little bit caught in the net so if you don't see it some days please have mercy on me but i will check back with you if i don't give you an episode you can hate me or you can just let it rip in the comment section but thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the likes, the comments, and the subscriptions. Um, doing this is kind of the best way to unwind, honestly. And to also interact with you guys and see what you guys think. I've never actually cooked in front of a camera before. So every single request that wants me to do that... Oh, you're gonna have to wait for quite a while, especially to like in my gas stove, and I have a kitchen of my own, you know, which is very soon, and I'm in a different country, because um, by the end of this year, I will not be in Morocco, I will be in Japan, and um, yeah, so it's, um, oh, there's a lot to do, there's a lot of work to do, there's a lot of processes, I will not be in Morocco, by the time 2023 ends and i will be in a completely different country so you guys are gonna have to bear with me so you know, <laughs> have patience my beautiful ones titans i will bid you adieu and catch you in the next one until then young titan out thanks for watching